Yeah, I know. You're looking at me and you're like, seriously, Cal, you've been a NASCAR fan for 12 years? Yes, my fellow Blue State Libs. Grab a beer and come with me. NASCAR has it all. Day drinking, grilling, whoever this guy is and whoever this guy is. Wait, is that Kid Rock? This is so get here on this track and you feel the rumble inside you when those cars are going around. I'm getting chills just thinking about it right now. I felt the rumble in my dick. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't mad about it. I'm not mad about it either, yes. Okay, here's the deal. NASCAR is different from what you probably think. I feel like people think it's just really like a redneck thing. And I mean, it kind of is, but it's for everyone, you know? I'm like, I've watched NASCAR since I was like 12 or before then because of because of my parents going to NASCAR races. Black people love racing. People may not realize how much African Americans love not just NASCAR, any form of racing. Bubba Wallace is one of the biggest stars in the sport, and he happens to agree. I think, you know, from, from outside looking in, especially minorities feel the, the stigma's been there that they're not welcome. And I've always been like, that's not really true. You know, I've been in NASCAR, this is, my career has been 20 years. Yeah, 20 years is about Aren't right. Actually, like 29? I'm 29, yeah. Okay, yeah. wow. I can tell you right now, there is no New Jersey parent who would let their kid drive at nine. <laughs> so, so I always get the question, what's it like being an Indian American actor? I would imagine it also drives you insane to yep. get the question, oh, what's it like being a black driver? Yep. So uh, what's it like being a black driver? Yeah, so clickbait and right. news outlets, they have to get their viewership up. And uh, the way they do that is black driver. Yeah, I right. don't walk around saying I'm the black driver. Yeah. So yeah, you embrace it and you go out and enjoy what you do. After I got my media clickbait, we moved on to an issue that everyday Americans actually care about. All right, a lot of people really want to know this. How do you pee in 400 miles? I can't go 45 minutes without having yes. to Yes, so have you ever been in a high adrenaline moment? Well, once. I once rode a cheetah in a movie. Did you have speed in that moment? Uh, uh, no. Exactly. So you're really in the zone then for, yeah, you're for the that. Zone, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and they always say, if you do pee in the car, then you gotta be there Monday morning to clean it out. Oh. Uh, you wanna clean it out? You don't have somebody for that? They're not gonna do it. Ears, ears, ears. Here's another stereotype. Drivers aren't real athletes. They just lazily sit there making left turns. The athleticism side of it, to me, you know, our heart rates, you know, peak at about 170. Okay. And then during the race, you're around the 140 area. I mean, that's a, that's a high heart rate for a sustained long period of time. Yeah. And hydration is huge. I can lose up to about seven pounds in the race car on a hot in day. In one race? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. can I drive this race? I would love to look, well, you, you know, got good a physique, little... man. I mean, thank you, thank good. you, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. And for some fans, it's not just a love of fast cars. Racing can get dramatic on and off the track. This is a soap opera most of the it, time in this garage. It's the NFL meets Housewives. You know, these are hard-nosed battles. It's not kind of like, you know, spatty. It can get real at 200 miles an hour fast. Can we have a feud? It's, it's kind of past my time. I got to get ready for this race. OK. Thing. OK, I'm in a feud with Austin Dillon. So Why? Will you, just because he walked out of my interview. Oh. So will you take my side in this feud? I always got your side. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. The only escape from all the drama? The pit crew, where I met tire changer Delanda Wendano, a former college athlete who was recruited by NASCAR's diversity initiative. Everybody knows how to change a tire. Well, I don't know how to change a tire, but what's the big deal about changing tires? It's just about how fast you can do it. One tire can take, like, maybe two, three seconds. We did reps after reps after reps every time because I think two tens of a second cost a lot of money for a team if you make a mistake. As someone who was recently told he had a good physique, I knew that joining the pit crew would be easy. So like the jack man's jacking the car up. I'm like, jack that shit up. He jacks it up. The guy's giving him some gas. I grab the other tire because I got to take it out. And I bring it back like this and I kick it over there. And then everyone's like, you're almost going to win. So I grab it like that and I bring it back over here. And I'm like, OK, great job. And the driver takes off. So he wins the race and we win a lot of money. Yeah, in theory, I, I think we missed a couple steps. Oh, Sorry. shit. Yeah, and that, that's a penalty. After crushing it with the pit crew, I wanted to see if there were any indoor jobs with air conditioning. There's just so much more data and science that goes into it than I think anybody really realizes when they see cars going around in circles, right? So the data comes from the cars, uh, and then the car has its speed, it's got its, its RPM and the gear that it's in. That's like, is the car loose, like wants to spin out or is it tight? We look at what the driver is doing with the wheel 
and then we try and tell him, hey, you need to turn the wheel less, or you need to be on the gas more. This, uh, this <laughs> sounds like cheating. Tom Brady fans would love this. Absolutely. This is... As a number crunching genius, JR represents the new NASCAR and has had a front row seat to the sport's evolution. The sport's way different than it has been in the past. You know, my husband and I talk about it all the time, even myself working for Bubba. You know, I think a lot of people have always thought that this sport was kind of out of reach, not only because of they couldn't get into the sport, but also because they wouldn't be accepted by the sport. I mean, I think that just being out there and being vocal is, is super important, and I never thought 12-year-old me would be doing it. <laughs> well, this was 12-year-old me, and he would have been terrified by what I'm about to do. Uh, where do I connect the Bluetooth for the podcast? Oh, I wish. These things are meant for it to go fast, so anything extra, we just pull out of the car. Okay. I can't drive stick. Is that a problem? No, you're good. Okay. He basically just puts you in fourth gear and just push you off, man. Do only the uh, snowflake drivers get the push since we can't drive stick? Pretty much. Here we go. This is real inclusion. NASCAR making space for athletes like me who can't drive stick. Off the clutch, give a gas, off the clutch, give a gas, off the clutch, give a gas, give a gas. That left pedal, push it in, grab that stick and put it all the way down to the right. One stick. The shifter, it's that big stick in the middle right there, that car. Okay, put your thing, pull it, push it forward. There you go, you're doing good out there. All good, this is awesome. Oh, I can feel my thing. Woo! A little scared at first, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I then I was like getting into it. And then after I peed my pants, it was such a relief. That was awesome. Okay, that was fun and I lost two pounds, but there is a more social way to enjoy racing. Hey guys, can I come up? Yeah. Yes, thank you. This is the infield where families camp out for the weekend to watch the races up close. Are you thirsty? Sure. There you go, cheers. Thank you, cheers. Thank cheers. you guys. Cheers. How long have you been coming here? Uh, for 23 years. We're all family. You definitely have the best view. And that's really what NASCAR is all about. <laughs> family, speed, and crushing beers on top of an RV with a group of new friends. Cheers. 